In this video, we'll cover one of the foundation starter projects that you get with the SAS version. Now, this is the Zurb stack. So if you choose the advanced template in the foundation CLI, this is what is created for you. So I'm gonna show you around some of the things that you get with this package and how to use it the best way. So we'll start with just explaining what some of these folders are. So your Bower Components folder is where some of the front end packages that are used in foundation are kept. Bower is a package manager and so some of these are foundation for sites, jQuery, motion UI, which is our animation library, and what input, uh, which is for accessibility. So that's what's in the Bower Components folder. In the Node Modules folder is all the packages that NPM installs, and there's a ton of them. So you don't really need to know what all of those are, but a lot of them do some of the automated tasks that uh, compile SAS, run browser sync, and quite a few of the other features that are in the Zurb stack. So you also get a source folder. Now the source folder is actually where you're gonna be doing all your work. So source folder contains assets, data is for Panini, layouts, pages, partials, and style guides. So I'm gonna just quickly show you what all of these are. So if you jump into the assets folder, you get an image folder. Of course, it comes empty to begin with. These git ignore files are required for GitHub to not freak out when you have an empty folder being committed. So you can go ahead and delete those. And then you have a JavaScript file here. App.js is where you would put all your custom JavaScript or jQuery. Uh, and of course you see that foundation is initialized right here. SCSS, this is where all your SAS partials will live. Now we've included a components folder we believe this is a really good structure if you really think in components when you're building your SCSS, uh, then it would really help you keep your project organized. So we'd put all the components into the components folder. And of course you get a settings file. We have a different video on the settings file, but uh, settings files where you can change all the defaults in foundation that are available in these variables and your app.scss file, this is where all the foundation components and their classes are included. So, we move moving down the line. If we look at data, data is where you can create YAML files for data that you will uh, inject with the Panini Handlebar Templating Engine. And Panini is part of this advanced build. And so that is something that you can use as well. Layouts, these are your default layouts. So if you were to imagine that this was your index.html page, basically your boilerplate for every page, it's contained in this uh, layouts folder under default.html. Now this is a folder, so you can add other layouts in here if you want to have different layouts for maybe different sections, different branding on different parts of your website. And of course you can see that the boilerplate is here, HTML5 doc type, HTML tags, and then you have your head tag uh, that links to your CSS. So this is automatically going to inject the body of all your pages right in here and this has a little bit more production code in here uh, to create an off canvas, but you could see that the body of each of your pages will actually be injected into this layout. Then you have pages. Pages is where you are going to create all your pages. So this is one page. Your index.html will act as your home page or your default landing page. And if you were to create new pages, you just add a new file in here, name it whatever you want. Make sure you have the HTML extension on the end of that. And now we have a new page that we can link to. Partials are for Panini. And this allows you to create HTML partials that you can inject with handlebars. So that's what Panini does. 
and uh, you would put all your HTML partials into the partials folder. And of course, the Zerb stack also comes with a style guide. So this is a style guide generator. This is really cool, uh, and style guides really help your company keep clean code, maintainable code, and keep your product moving down the line. Even if people leave the company, they know uh, how to produce new pages, new components. So you have an index dot markdown page, so you can actually write your style guide in markdown, which is really gonna speed things up. And so you can describe how your grid works, how your components work. Uh, there is a default style guide built in here, so you can basically just take what we give you and then modify it for your own branding. And this is nice because it already pulls in all the SCSS all the CSS basically that you create for your site automatically. And then your template.html is what actually renders the look and feel of the style guide itself. So if you wanna change how that looks, uh, by default it has a sidebar, then you can change that as well. And a few other files that are really important here. Uh, one of the most important ones is the disk file folder. So this folder is, stands for distribution and all your compiled assets will end up in here. So if we open this up and take a look, you have this assets folder and here you have your CSS. This is your compiled CSS. So this includes all your SCSS partials and foundation CSS all rolled into one file. So that way you only have one call to the server. Now, of course, all your images will be copied over. All your JavaScript will be concatenated and moved over into this JavaScript folder. And uh, you also get this SCSS file. And then all your pages will get copied over as well. And if you were using any Panini handlebars, they will be flattened beforehand so they will look like a standard web page. As you can see here, the default layout has been flattened with the index page injected in here. So that's basically your static website. So the disk folder is where all your compiled assets are. This is where your website lives that will actually be rendered on a web page or pushed up to a server to be deployed. And a few other files to look at, uh, we have a package.json, this is what actually controls the versioning for all the NPM dependencies. And we have a gulp file. Gulp file controls all the build, we're using gulp to control all the build tasks. So a lot of the tasks, or all the tasks are controlled here. Uh, so things like image minification, things like JavaScript concatenation, CSS compilation, and all the other things that go into it, browser sync as well, and Panini as well as processed here. So the Gold file controls that, and we have a different video that shows you some of those uh, changes that you can make. Config file is where a lot of the configurations that are kept in the Gold file can be modified easily in this YAML format. So if you want to change the server port that Browser Sync creates, you can change that here. If you want to change the compatibility of Auto Prefixer, you can change that here. On CSS options, you can add more classes to ignore. So lots of lots of options here. And Bower.json, this controls the Bower package versioning as well. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into the foundation Zurb stack and it really gives you quite a performance package to code with. And if you're looking for a deeper dive in that, make sure you check out our advanced foundation class where we go through everything piece by piece and you'll really become an expert at this.